Hey there, uh, welcome to Juniper Networks Learning Byte. My name is Maru Filos and I'm a lab architect with Education Services Lab Team. In this Learning Byte, I'm going to be showing you how to deploy a BQFX, Juniper BQFX switch on a EVNG uh, community edition. So, uh, what is EVNG? So, EVNG uh, stands for Emulated Virtual Environment Next Generation, and that's according to the EVNG website. Uh, it's a great tool for learning uh, new interconnected technologies such as you know networking, virtualization, and so on. And, you know you can you can learn uh, create your own uh, network scenario uh, with different kinds of uh, virtual appliances and uh, connect them together and learn uh, learn uh, you know learn about them, right? Uh, and most of the uh, UI operation uh, can be done through the web UI that comes in uh, with the EVNG server. And there will be a little bit of SSH needed, SCP, and some CLI to get the image uh, imported first. And then uh, usually, you know, after that, you can use a web tool to do most of the stuff. You can deploy uh, EVNG server on uh, any new generation computers, PCs. Uh, I prefer Intel best. PCs, uh, I found it better. And that works better with the uh, Juniper approach as well. And bare metal servers, uh, hypervisors, and the cloud, of course, right? And there are documentation on how to do that in each of these uh, environments uh, if you follow their website. Uh, there's a cookbook that you can follow there uh, for the community edition that you can read through and uh, learn more about it. Obviously, this we're going to be showing on the community edition uh, for this demo because it's free to use as of today. Uh, they do have paid versions uh, with more features and support, right? But uh, the free edition, the community edition can be, you know, will be a good starting point for many of you if you're just trying to learn about Juniper uh, switches and, you know, everything else as well, you Linux and everything. Almost uh, most of the virtual appliances that I tried so far, VMX, VRR, VKFX, uh, VSRX, uh, you know, uh, they do seem to work on the AVNG uh, today and, and it can change in the future, uh, you know, but today, I mean, Always check their website uh, to make sure it works. And you can learn more about uh, the EVNG, uh, you know, the product itself uh, if you go to their website. Learn more about their features requirements. Okay, a okay, good resource. So uh, I'm going to start the demonstration, um, which basically involves first going to the uh, CLI to the server, uh, the EVNG server. Uh, so my EVNG server is basically on running on an ESXi environment. So it's, uh, it has the hardware assisted CPU uh, enabled, turned on, you know, uh, and uh, it's basically uh, that way it can deploy VMs, right, inside of it, uh, which I missed. So the BQ phase that will be deployed will be basically running on that EVNG uh, hypervisor itself, TV, which is probably KVM in the backend. And it's best to move on to this thing. So, uh, I downloaded the uh, the VQFX uh, evaluation images from the Juniper site under this folder. Uh, it doesn't have to be this folder. I downloaded under my root images VQFX folder. And we have to move these uh, images uh, to another folder so that EVNG can detect them. Okay. Uh, so there's an instruction about that. Uh, and I'm going to bring up the actual instruction page for the VQFX under from their website today. And this UI may change in the website, you know, so let's make sure to go check and see the latest, okay? So first we have to create uh, some directories and copy some files. So we're gonna do that first and you have to follow the standard process that they advise you to do. So all the images will be saved there. So we're gonna create a directory first with our version number. So it's gonna be different than what they're showing. So you're using uh, 20, um, 20.2 R1.10. So 20.2. Okay, so this is going to be our PFE folder. Okay, and I'm going to, the next one will probably be the RE, which is just the only difference the RE will be there. I'm going to do the same one. Probably RE. Then we have to move the file. So move. Causing image, uh, I don't see any causing. Let's see, from the previous version. Let me check here. Uh, 
It looks like some part has got cut off. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh, there you go. Uh, so basically, you have to move this. The this is the uh, for the. This is for the PFE first. So this is the PFE first. And uh, this is going to be SDA. Okay, that's what I need. Okay, let's do that. So, move this PFE to that. That folder. Double check. SDA.qcom2. That's done. So the next one is move the you know now the RE image to this folder to the RE and let me see what this it does. This also that is interesting. I cannot see. Okay, I'm gonna try uh, the SDA. Let's try SDA. I haven't tried it before, so this person a dot is called two. Once we do that, let's try the. Why that commands cut off? That's gonna fix all the permissions. Go to the HTML5 console. Okay, I'm logging. Uh, HTML5 console gives you ability to uh, connect to your devices through the web uh, HTML5 based uh, platform only, I believe, what they in the back end. Uh, log in first, I need to worry about any client tools. Let's click on add a new app. Your name, pick your facts, demo. I don't need any description. If you're gonna task here, yeah, you can fill it up based on your need, but I'm just gonna leave it back for now. So save. So I guess it's basic. Okay. okay, so now let's see if we see those. So click on add, add an object and click on add and roll. Let's see. It did detect that we can press RE. RE first, detect the image, and leave it like that. Default is fine. Two CPU, two gig default is fine. It has 15 Ethernet ports. I don't think I need 15. So for the RE, I probably keep like say, you know, let's say. First one is uh, first sneak will be used for uh, for the uh, management network. The second one is uh, the traffic between the PFE and RE, and the third one I believe is not used uh, for us. Something entirely uh, allocated, and the and the fourth sneak will be kind of like the XC zero. That's how it goes. Like that. Save. There. And an object again. Node. Same with the PFE. Keep it default. This is two nicks. First one is for the management. Second one is for the PFE to RE communication. Similar to DMX here. The only thing is that you know when you add more revenue posts, you add the RE component. And console talent is fine. I'll save. Let me make sure I've, I've set the console to tell them another one. Create it. Turn it down. That's good. Okay, so let's connect them together. Okay, I'm going to choose the EM1. EM1. Okay. You see? X is just going to be And this one is EM2 for management. Uh, some, some internal management. Okay. EM1. Have the direct link in there. That's done. 
So now we can add a network object. Let's add a cloud one internal uh, bridge. Um, it's the network. Call it VR PXT management. It's cloud one in this case. Um, cloud one is basically something internal. So I, uh, if you want to keep it internal, bridge, there are other uh, network you can use. Other bridges uh, you can use, but I prefer Cloud One. Uh, but you can read the uh, the community proof book uh, to learn more about different of uh, these bridges. Cloud One, I'm going to now so it back to the bridge almost. On save, so and then I'm going to add a Linux VM. Oh, Linux is fine. I don't need that much. Resource, just a basic Linux VM. And let's try two mix. Okay, that's fine. Default is fine. Let's try to connect them together. So this uh, for the VKFX RE. The bridge will be the FXP0. And then PFP is FXP0. And create zero. Same by external network, not by the external network. And then Connect directly. Click, uh, this one, wrong, wrong one. This one, try to see if we can manage it. The R is XC00. So it's, I think it's almost ready. So I'm going to power on this and see if I can connectivity to this uh, VKFX uh, to the management. And then uh, just, just so you know it works. And I'm going to power on and then I'm going to pause so that you know, it goes through the initial boot process. It can take a while. And then I'm going to configure the IPs, some basic IPs on them. And then I'm going to show you connectivity, OK? Uh, nothing special on, on the, on the uh, topology side of things. So I'm gonna click on uh, not this, sorry. And you can poke around this, you know, learn more and by the cookbook, with the cookbook at almost. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna pause and uh, come back later. Okay, so it looks like our uh, peak effects are up and running and the Linux VM is up and running. So I configured some basic IP on the Linux VM uh, to both of those NICs. One is the, the management network, 172.25.11.254, connecting uh, to the management network uh, of, the, of our topology. And this one is 10.10.10.254, is connected directly to the uh, XC000 of the VKFX, okay? So uh, the VKFX uh, is also configured with an IP so in the places turn in. So we have uh, the XC000 figured with this IP and the EM0, which is our management for uh, the uh, VKFX, is on the 172.5.11.1. Let's see if we can ping the Linux server from here. We can. Make sure uh, we can ping the uh, 1010 network from through the XC00, and we can, right? And so when you bring up the VIA, uh, VMX, uh, VKFX, RE, and PFE, first time, you need to make sure the FTC comes online. It takes a while for it to boot up and detect each other. Uh, but once you see it online, then you can start configuring it. Okay, so I hope uh, this video helps and thank you for watching.
Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.